Hey everyone and welcome back to another edition of LSD News. My name is Emily and this is... Your buddy Greg. My buddy Greg. So we'll start with our first story. The story is called, Why You'll Never Find Real Love Online. Um, so, the story was, it will, it's more of an interview that they did, Marie Claire did with... Um, A um, former scientist with Match.com. Match. Um, His name is Mark Thompson. So Mark um, talks about in this article how what are the chances of really finding love um, using online dating sites. He does say that he doesn't think it's worth the $30 you pay to get set up on a blind date that you can get set up. Well, the thing was, from what he does as a scientist for what he used to do for Match.com, was basically try to create algorithms, you know, algorithms of... Uh, Hopefully try to do compatibility, trying to do chemistry, and try to make it into a science to, I guess, for whenever you input your preferences or whatever you want, the computer does the math, the site does the math, and then find whatever the answer should be to match up to you. And that would be the person you should be dating. And he's basically saying that a lot of it's faulty. Right. And that the people, because you know how Match.com has like that great commercial where it's, we found my, I found my husband on Match.com and we've been together for 10 years. He's saying that those are the exceptions. Yeah. That only one out of 10 people on Match.com actually find, you know. Or someone, actually date for more than a month. Right, actually date for more than a month. Um, that percentage is pretty low, I think, for what you're paying monthly. Not necessarily. Because you do have to remember, is it one out of 10 in terms of... <clears throat> Strictly dating because remember you, you're filtering through a whole bunch of crap. You, you're getting rid of the weirdos, the creeps, the freaks, people that are definitely not your type at all. And when you do finally get a date, you're probably only dating a couple of people, and you're probably on a few different websites, stacking up a few dates. That's true. So you know. And he does go on to say that. What dating websites do promise more than what they can actually deliver. Um, I mean, because a lot of it, you know, is now about we have four or five different websites, or even the two big ones, eHarmony and Match.com, and it's kind of like an arms race of what add-ons we have more that this place or this other site doesn't have. Like you know, eChemistry, they have we have the chemistry factor. And Match.com has, well, we have the compatibility factor, and they're always trying to outdo each other, and a lot of these things are not effective at all. No. Because they're just doing this to pull in the people. Yeah. Even if they're... So the dating, matching people up doesn't even matter. It's more about getting the clientele, and then, you know, working it from there. Ladies, I'm sad to say in our next story, you have lost another prince. Prince William of, I think, uh, Wales, Prince of Wales. He is postponed, he proposed to his girlfriend. And that's not really the big news, which you know usually is a big news. Prince gonna marry someone, girls go crazy for that, media loves it. But the thing is he's actually proposed to her with his mother's ring. That's Princess and Diana. I'll give you the numbers about the ring. It's an eighteen carat sapphire ring surrounded by white diamonds. Now my question is it it's really her wing, like, you know, when she died, the ring that used to be in her possession was in his possession, or did he get, like, a duplicate? That's what I'm getting from the article, because it says, you know, he proposed with his late mother's engagement ring. Oh, no, that's, that's creepy. I think heirloom rings, uh, I like heirloom rings. But the thing is, it's not the heirloom that bothers me. And I get it because, you know, you know, it's an heirloom. His mother was very important to me. Right. But it's creepy that you're going to... I'm going to propose to you because you're so sexy and beautiful with my mom's ring. I just got to put a ring on it with my mom's ring. Okay, but that's not the way these guys are thinking. When they, when they proposed, it was, I'm sure I'm sure it wasn't like, you're so sexy, I but wish you had my mom's on. ring. I'm but sure isn't, that, isn't that the, the ultimate mother-in-law is always going to be in your life? Because you have this ring here. That represents all his love for his mother. And whenever you look at the ring, you know, gotta think about his mother. This is the ultimate woman. The ring, the previous owner, is the ultimate woman for that kid. 
No, I think it only I think it signifies, you know, how much he wants you to be part of his family and how it makes it even more official that, you know, this used to be my mom's, now it's yours. Like you're officially as right. it, like part of the family. That's great, that's beautiful, but guess what? Her previous engagement, her marriage ended. That's true. With his father, the actual prince. And then I don't know if she got married yet to the other guy. I don't think they were married. But then I think they were getting towards them before she died. Yeah. I don't think it's creepy. I don't think it's weird. Okay, maybe their marriage didn't work, but it still, you know, was his mother's. From his father. If he was gonna give them ring to anybody, it would have been his daughter. You think so? To me it makes more sense if the mother gave the ring down to her daughter but she never had a daughter or that the prince, the, her son, gave the ring down to his daughter. Why would he take that ring and go, yo, I'm thinking about my mom when I'm marrying you. No, <laughs> and that's where I think you're wrong in the sense that he's not thinking every time I, I you know, hold your hand and be holding the hand of my mother. No, I think he gave it to her as, you know, this is the ultimate, like, sign of how much I love you and how much, you know, you're going to be part of this family. And it's the ultimate sign that you're never going to compare to my mother. No, I don't believe that. No. You won't be half the princess my mother was. See, now you're going crazy. But anyways, I think it was a very nice gesture and we'll move on. <laughs> hide your women, hide your breasts. We got a fake plastic surgeon in town. In Boise, that is. Boise, which is practically right near Chicago. <laughs> so basically, a woman was posing as a plastic, a plastic surgeon in nightclubs. And what do you think? Um... I think the women who allowed this to happen to them are a little stupid. Oh, the thing is, she posed as a plastic surgeon and she would approach these women and basically tell them, you know, this is what I do. And for whatever reason, the woman decided to go, well, I need work done, what do you think? And he would actually give them a Brex exam right there. Well, he was a she at the time, so she would, you know, she. give them, I guess take them, I don't know, this is the way I see it, like take them to the woman's washroom. You know, lift up the shirt, feel what's the, what was the situation, and um, but, Kristen Ross actually, you know, gave these women, you know, Christina, Christina, sorry, Christina Ross gave these women, you know, she checked out their boobs, and then gave them an actual phone number to actual plastic surgeon in Boise, and so this is how they found out that this was going on because the plastic surgeon, the surgeon's office, you know, reported that they've been getting a lot of calls as a usual for, amount of calls. Asking for what was the name? It's a hard name. A uh, Berlin, Ozzy, Shawana. Ozzy Shona. Shoa. Shona. Ozzy Shona. Whatever Look. that consonant is in the middle. I yeah. don't know what, what it means, <laughs> how you say it. Yeah, so basically, these women were calling the real plastic surgeon's office asking for that fake plastic surgeon. And so the plastic and the, surgeon's office the called the and reported it. She kind of had some medical knowledge. She kind of knew what she was talking about. She offered a little bit of advice to them to come in, mm -hmm. set up appointments. But basically, why are women showing their titties in a bar? I know. I That's stupid. It's a bar. That's so stupid. I don't care how drunk you are. Even if you're a little tipsy. I'm not lifting up my shirt there. Hi, for I'm a gynecologist. <laughs> Step into my office, which happens to be the a washroom that's full of vomit. <laughs> and I'll do a sterile exam. As a woman... I think if someone approached me and said, hey, you know, how, what do you feel about a boob job? You know, I'm a doctor. I can give you, you know, whatever prices. I'd say, sure, give me your card, and then I can go into your office and get whatever exam you want. I'm not going to go into the bathroom stall and lift up my shirt. But obviously, this is a, you know, a smart person. They had a great opener or a plastic surgeon. They kind of knew the kind of type of women that are going to go, you're a plastic surgeon? And kind of like feed on that. And, you know, I am. I can check you out and see if you need any work done. You know, feel on you. <laughs> Cop a quick feel in a freaking bar, but I don't know. But she's in jail right now, right? Or they're holding her. Yeah, the cops head. identify as a female, but she had an arrest warrant in April of this year or yeah. last year uh -huh. for a robbery. Yes, petty robbery, I think. Something like that. And they identify her as what was the name? 
Christopher John, John Ross. Ross as a male. Yeah, so we're not too sure of the sex yet. We're not even too sure if it's a transgender. Or if it was just a male dressing up like a woman to do this. Which just boggles my mind even more if you can't figure it out. With the Adam's apple and the, the stubble. <laughs> Listen, tell you that maybe this person who the has a The big manly on. hands on your boobs.